In this portion of Killing the Cubase, we're going to talk about the helicopter tool. Okay, uh, in this one we're going to talk about it's was my most hated uh, feature of Cubase when I first got it, and now it's probably my most loved feature, and I call it the helicopter tool. Toll. Man, I sound like I'm from a, looks like a moron from some geographic area I don't want to be a part of. Anyway, uh, the helicopter tool is not really the helicopter tool at all. It's this thing. And what is this thing? It's what the blue stuff is, the ruler, whatever. The, the thing in Cubase is your navigation, where you go forward and backward, all you really have to do is click in this little thing. And uh, it, it's because you click here, it doesn't do anything. You don't care because you can move stuff like that and, and ruin your audio. And this particular arrangement is pretty sparse. I mean, this track's empty except for one little spot. This track's empty for another spot. So it seems like you should be able to just drag that thing. And, but when you record a rock band where all of these things are, are these tracks are totally filled up with something uh, guitars and bass and drums and all that, it's, uh, there's just nowhere to, to, to move it. And so it makes sense for them to, designated this one little area now for you people who are crappy with a mouse you're gonna be like Arr! Arr! like you people like born like before vietnam are probably like, but us nerds who are raised on nintendo and computers it's pretty simple to, to hit that and if you miss i mean and you will you'll tear stuff up so just be careful and you learn it's not that bad but if you click in there you can move your the thing now here's where it gets interesting and why I call it a helicopter tool because it's kind of I don't know if you guys know how to fly a helicopter like I do uh, but the the uh, the uh, tail rotor what is that damn thing I'm going tail rotor um, you know that's always constantly fighting the, the 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 helicopter from spinning around on you and so you got to give it some gas to basically uh, create an equilibrium there anyway so it's just an awkward goofy thing at first until you get used to it well, zooming is the helicopter part. Is let's just say I wanted to go to 25, and I want this virus uh, MIDI track. I want to see this stuff in great detail. All right. All I got to do, of course, is drag 25, and then I pull down while while still holding the click button and let go. And there it is. Now, for uh, people who are brand new to this business, where for one, you see I just zoomed out and ended up way the hell off on. 260 or 230 or something uh which you actually can see the exact one right there 239 anyway um we're zoomed out as far as we possibly can and if i didn't have all this extra junk at the end which i don't even need well, i say that i'll leave it anyway uh let's just say i wanted to go to bar 10 and zoom in well i'm, done, I'm still got again okay let me walk you through this because you can't see my finger all right we're gonna go to 10 clicking going over and pulling down and then find 10, 10, 10, 10, and there it is. Now, if I want to scroll down on the tracks, see, other words, I'm a little wheel. I don't know what you Mac people do. You Mac people got your own thing going. I, I respect you. You guys have your fun. But I don't know what to tell you. I don't do that. That's a different world for me. Kind of like France. <laughs> anyway, I'm aware of their contribution to, America, to the United States and all that. So, shut up. Anyway, um... It's just an odd thing, and, and it's going to take you practice, but I'll tell you what, when you get used to it, it's, it's the best thing ever. Um, kind of like maybe women, if you deal with them, they're like, man, these these creatures are retarded. I hate them. And then sometimes you, something about it, uh, about them, you, you get kind of addicted. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you get addicted, then you hate everything about them. doesn't matter. Anyway, the point here is uh, get used to, and the big thing too is, is acknowledge the, or accept the fact that once you click, you can go move your mouse wherever you want to um, in terms of up and down so you don't have to stay within that ruler framework in fact you can't because um, if you're trying to zoom in or out um, it's going to be weird so uh, I recommend you doing a little practice and it, you're probably like I could see you guys who like are so set in your ways like god oh, damn this is so stupid and maybe it is I don't know but I, it's a fast way of working and it's faster than any way I've seen now if you absolutely hate that way of working I mean, you can just click there and then go down here. Wait, wrong one. Then go down here. That That's two steps, and I'd rather just do one. You know what I mean? So, to each his own. Um, while we're talking about this kind of miscellaneous stuff, I uh, hope I can... I'm, I'm going to forget things, so um, 
which, which is unfortunate. But um, the Z button, uh, Z, and it will make all these tracks small. Well, big, then small. Okay, and so that's useful if you want to have a bunch of gigantic tracks and then you need to calm them down. And uh, that's something that's awesome. Uh, folder tracks, another thing that's really awesome. And let me explain that to you. I have one right here, aptly named Folder, as you can see. And what that means is, let me turn on my snapping by pushing J, and then push 3 to cut some stuff. I Anything in this folder, let's, let, let's actually see what's in it. Okay, everything but my effects uh, channels. And now they're in it too. So basically my entire production's in this. If I push there, actually let's just cut it once. Let's just cut it at, uh, oh, damn it. Cut it at 53. Did I do that? Is that a cut? No, it isn't. Okay, cut it at 53 and move it to 57. Oops, man, I'm fucking, let me slow down here. I'm, I'm gonna get wound up. Okay, there. The entire production now has a four bar gap in it. Um, this is very useful if we wanted to, uh, here, let me look, let's look in this folder. Would you click on this little expand collapse thing right there? Kind of weird to get used to. Okay, that was in the middle of a chorus. Let's say we wanted to double this. So I'd click on the folder track, just like it was a, a WAV file or something. And then I'm gonna click Alt. And it's gonna let me duplicate it by moving it right there. Now let's listen to see what kind of damage I did. This may or may not make sense. So we're, we're gonna have to kind of play it by ear. We're pretty good. So if we wanted to, to double a chorus, double the first chorus after the production's mostly finished, that could be a real pain in the ass. With this method, since everything's in this folder, I can do it all at once. Pretty wicked stuff. And then, of course, we can go back. And to do that, let me... Control Z is undo. Pretty much like everything. And you can see that over here. Cubase does have a history thing, which it, it kind of keeps track of every all the damage you've done. Um, if you run into trouble, look into the history thing. I watched a DVD on that and when I first got it, and was, was really impressed by it. And then in real life, it's not been as good as I thought. But, all right, so I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to push 5, all right? Yeah, five, that's the eraser button. And I'm gonna go pow. All right, now I'm gonna push one. And I'm gonna click on that and drag it over. And it works because we have snapping on right now. And in fact, I can push four, that's the little glue guy. And it's like it never happened. There's no no lines or anything, which may or, not, may or may not be a bad thing. Um, so folders are awesome for, I like to have a folder for the entire production for that reason right there. Anytime an arrangement needs to change, they are so handy. Um, but there are other times, too. Um, uh, like, if we have maybe keeping all the guitars in one track, and then if you want to cut out noise, um, it kind of, in a way, works the same way that a group track works in processing audio, like a subgroup. Uh, instead, though, we can edit audio in one chunk. And so I find that to be very, very uh, useful. One thing I've been griping about wanting a long time, and I think Cubase 6 can do it, is actually the lane style editing within um, a folder. Now that's pretty crazy and advanced and I probably shouldn't even be scaring you with it, but imagine you have a folder of, of 10 drum tracks and then you hit record, wouldn't it be all, and all we can really see is just one little track, even though if you put expand it, basically this one little track, but if you expand it, there's tons of junk in there. Well, it'd be awesome to hit record again with the cool lane system and to remind you of the lanes. Let's open up Profit and that lets us do this with the little green guy. So basically then you can record 10 tracks, and record the same take again with drums, and then cut out the little parts you want. And it would make editing multi-track really, really nice. So anyway, I think Cubase 6 has that. Not sure, probably the fancy version, not the cheap ones. But folders are very, very handy. And if even if you're slow to embrace them uh, in a year or two, check them out again. That's a feature that I highly recommend. Um, are there any other junk I need to tell you? Probably, and I have forgotten it. But anyway, make sure the helicopter tool that you uh, put some time into that. And remember, pulling down, zooms out, pushing up, zooms in, and then left or right. Um, you will get the hang of that. And uh, check out the folder tracks. All right, guys, thanks. Bye.